it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and I'm privileged to be today with Dean Ray. Hi, Dean. Hi, Lauren Yates. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm really hot. Yeah, he's decided uh, to wear the panda onesie on like I'm a, Christmas a 35 panda. degree day. Christmas panda coming at you. Yeah, we've, live. We need to make, get in the Christmas spirit now that it's December. And I'm sure everyone watching and listening is going, wasn't Dean just on the show like a few weeks ago? And he was. That's why I had to wear something different, so you'd recognise. But recognize. we, we want to, this is the Christmas special Rave It Up, and we wanted to get in the mood, in the vibe, and we're actually going to do role reversal today, because Dean wants to interview me. That's right. <laughs> Just I had, fantastic. I uh, had a few questions for Lauren last time she interviewed me, and I said, right, it's my turn. Asked her a couple of things, just as she was packing up the cameras, and I liked the answers, and I said, hang on, I think your listeners would really dig hearing some of these things. So I've written out a whole bunch of questions for y'all. So have you ever interviewed someone before? Because this would be a very good test. <laughs> I have not ever interviewed anybody before, but I've I been interviewed be a lot probably of close to a thousand times now. Yeah. So, But before we get started, since it is Christmas, I do have an actual surprise for you as well. Oh, you brought a present for me? Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't buy anything for you. Hang on, wait. This is a present to me getting interviewed because I don't get it very much. Oh, cool, I get a stocking. <laughs> I got this stocking for you at the Salvos. It's so um, pretty. I was also... just thinking how pretty it was. Also, where I got my Christmas hat from, and this really sad-looking reindeer called Jeffeth. Um, oh, he's still got his price tag on. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Shout out to the Salvos. <laughs> I literally just got home from a trip down to Melbourne to do a, a record launch five minutes before Lauren arrived. Um, this is Jeffeth. He has broken antlers, but he's here. Poor guy. Nonetheless, we're giving him some some camera time. Oh God. <laughs> Can I unwrap this now? Yeah, up, up to you. Wrap no, I'll it unwrap it later. Because we're going to do it privately, but I just questions. wanted to do that on camera. Thank you, dear. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So I'm just going to, because a journalist would usually have palm cards, I'm just using an iPhone. It's I very it's 21st great. century of you. It totally is. Um, so, Lauren <laughs> Yates. <laughs> Dean Ray turns on the interview voice. <laughs> yes, Dean. This is very serious. Tell me about the beginning of Rave It Up. Ooh. How did this idea come to life and what was the driving force behind it? How far back do you want to go? <laughs> right to the beginning. Right Lauren to Yates. the beginning. Well, when I was young, I've always loved celebrity news. Um, didn't think interviewing as a job back then though, but I always loved celebrity news and I loved E! News. I don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. watched E! News. And always wanted to work for them. I was like, this would be such a cool job. I can move to LA and, you know, meet every single person I've ever look up, looked up to. Um, but then as I got older, I was like, you know, why work for E! News when I could be E! News? Hello. So, um, and I've always loved the idea of working for myself and building something from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, okay, well, let's create a website. And before that, I actually uh, did have some experience making websites anyway. Um, my mum does it as a job, but also I had... Uh, a Justin Bieber fan site that ended up, <laughs> yeah. What was that you called? Didn't know. It was called ilovejustinbieber.org. It is still oh up there. Oh my gosh. But it has not been updated for years. Um, I used to follow that site. You, you can, you can go just, have a look at it. My photo with Justin Bieber when I met him is up there. And You met him. Where did you meet him? Um, At the Intercontinental. He was staying there when... Oh my gosh, you stalked his hotel. No. Well, I actually won a competition to meet him. Oh, that's so much I'm, less creepy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> A lot less creepier. Um, and it was when he was here for his promo tour. Mm -hmm. So when he was just starting to become famous. Back when he was 16. So a long time ago now. Mm -hmm. And it, the website ended up being the top Justin Bieber fan site in Australia. It's not anymore because I haven't updated it for so long. <laughs> but <laughs> as you do when you start talking about a celebrity for so long, you do want to start writing about other people. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I ended up doing. I thought, we'll rave it up. I can start writing about other people as well, not just Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. Still love the guy, not as much as I did. Um, I'm not that crazy fan anymore. But started the website, Just it ended up just being a little passion on the side, just doing it, but I did want to grow it. Yeah. So, and then I decided my very first interview was Justice Crew. The interview is still up on YouTube. Fantastic. <laughs> Gotten heaps of views, but when I watch it, I cringe because it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was my very first interview, so I l let it slide. She was a little bit awkward, guys. Yeah. It's okay. She's and improved a lot. I was a huge fan of theirs too, so I, you could kind of tell I was not fangirling, but a little bit. Yeah. So um, interviewed them, put it up on YouTube, put it up on the website, and I thought this is the start of something new. This is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, so that was a moment 
That was like, yeah. that was the changer. This That was the changer. Yeah. Interviewing Justice Crew and being backstage with them. Was it hard having, to get? Like, how did you get in touch with them? That was actually the easiest interview I've ever gotten, surprisingly. Um, this was before, you know, they went to the States and toured with Pitbull and stuff. So they just... I think it was only about a year after they won Australia's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. And all I did, I found out they were going to be at the Castle Hill Hill Centre back when it was there Mm -hmm. um, because they had a group called Little Justice. So it was little kids that they were mentoring and they were performing at this little fundraiser for them. And I thought, okay, I'll just call the call the Hill Centre up, see who's organising it and talk to her. And she's like, yeah, come on in for the show. And I was like, wow, that was so easy. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Where's um, the security in this place? I know. I could have just <laughs> been, you know, a really creepy person, really creepy fan. Um, but, yeah, went along. And I think it was a big eye-opener going um, after the interview as well when I actually had one-on-one time with them. And I was like, this is the way to do it. Instead of being amongst heaps of fans when, where celebrities aren't even going to notice you, Mm-hmm. Or you could have the one-on-one time with them. Bang on. Yeah, so I was like, this is what I want to do. So, you, um, so your love of, yeah, your love of artists and actors and yep. celebrities got you into it. And that's yeah, your, your, yeah. Your, your, the driving I force. I fell in love with interviewing. I never knew that it's something that you could do uh, yeah. for a job um, until I was older, obviously. Um, plus, as I got older as well and started interviewing people, my, um, I guess, fandom went away because I... I'm less of a fan of these people, but more of, uh, I more respect what they do. And I go, wow, these people have worked so hard to get to where they are. Um, plus, you know, they, you know, they work their butt off and they never take no for an answer. Plus they're so passionate about what they do. As passionate as I am about interviewing, that's how passionate, like for, for you yeah. as well, how passionate you well, are about music. That's why I got here, because I, I wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I need to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, Lauren, accept it. Not that I said no, but anyway. <laughs> Um, but the radio show is a whole different story. I don't know if you want me to go into that. Of course I do. Of course you do. <laughs> um, that was how Rave It Up was born. And then the radio show. Um, I never thought of having a radio show, really, to be honest. I really wanted to be on camera and on TV. Mm-hmm. And I thought YouTube's a great way to start that. Um, but I came across a show at the radio station I work at now, um, a show called The Stefan and Heinrich Show. And these two guys, they were my, around my age, they were actually younger than me by a year or two, and they were interviewing people I've always wanted to interview, plus they were talking about celebrity news that I was, that I was interested in. And I um, was listening for a few weeks, and Justice Crew went on as well, and of course I was listening because I was a fan. Um, and I decided they were giving away, like, um, some merchandise and I thought I'd call up and try to win it. I didn't unfortunately but I've gotten great great other stuff from Justice Crew since then but I decided off air to just chat to the presenter and said you know is there any chance of maybe getting some work experience and he's like okay give me your number I'll give you a call on Monday and he did and he's like well there's no proper work experience program we can put you through but come in next week come in before the show you can sit in during the show and then we'll just see how you go. And I ended up uh, really impressing them and I ended up being the main presenter, Stefan, his assistant for a long time. And Heinrich ended up um, leaving the show, unfortunately, but they had brought me on as a co-host before that. So when Heinrich left, it turned into the Stefan and Lawrence show. <laughs> wow. Because Heinrich is a lot more passionate about sports and um, so he moved on. And eventually Stefan moved on as well. He wanted mm-hmm. to become a cop. That was his other um, passion and he has now. So congrats to Stefan. We still keep in contact. We're still really good friends. And once they left, I was like, why not make a Rave It Up radio show? Fantastic. So grow the brand. You could have Rave It Up radio, Rave It Up TV. And that's exactly what's happened. So yeah. um, haven't looked back since. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So that's, so that's, what, that's what I heard when she came over for uh, to interview me last time. And I thought, wow, that's such a cool story. Because I had no idea. I thought about it many times. Like, who is Lauren Yates? What is for she? For the time we've known each other, he's never asked that. She? We've always talked about him. But I'm, I'm not like, complaining. Does, does Lauren Yates work for, is Rave It Up owned by someone else? So I wasn't sure. And then we found that out. The driving now, force behind it. <laughs> mistakes are the most effective way to build an empire Ooh. and to understand what you're doing. Yes. Um, I think they're the best way to learn to become a good professional and, and, and whatnot. Um, 
What mistakes have you made that have been a turning point for you and been really, really beneficial? Whether it be small things as to, oh my God, I forgot the camera, to, um, <laughs> <laughs> to you know, I've something never done that. big where, you know, like what, what mistakes have you really learnt from in your career so far that have gotten you through to where you are? I found I've made the most mistakes starting off as obviously. Um, it's trial and error, definitely for what I do, because even though I look up to a lot of people like Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah, that's exactly who I aspire to be, but my own version, of course. Um, there's no like a created path for you. So I've kind of had to make my own way. Um, so figuring out even how to organize interviews and now I've got it down pat where I know um, if I do a face-to-face -face interview, you know, have the palm cards ready, have the camera ready, make sure my camera operator now that I've got one um, is free um, and, you know, can help me out. Mm. Um, as well as in the early stages, I've made some very embarrassing mistakes. There's a couple of interviews that I've actually never aired because um, either technical difficulties that I did not know were happening until after the interview, um, where the audio was before I started filming, um, the, you know, the audio for the radio show was like really bad and I'm like, I cannot air this, which is good because I always want quality with my work. Mm -hmm. But it's always embarrassing when you go to the guests like, um, so I can't air that. We're going to have to do it again. Like, it's so <laughs> embarrassing. So now I've always had plan Bs, always. Um, like right now, even though we've got the mics in front of us, we also have another mic just in case. Yeah. Um, so I do the exact same thing. If I record a radio, um, a phone interview for radio, mm -hmm. I'll always have the mic that I'm using plus another one. Just yeah. plan B so I know that I'm secure. It's never going to happen again because yeah. it's so embarrassing. And not only embarrassing, but you know, I should have known better. We yeah. should always have a plan B with um, everything. And so they were the major mis. Like, they don't sound major, but to me, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, I can't really think of many other mistakes. I do look back upon other interviews and I go, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or, you know, just little minor things. But that's just me being really picky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other than me, who is your favorite person you've interviewed? so far since the beginning how did i know you were gonna ask that <laughs> <laughs> to be honest well i had I'd... to make it less awkward because no, if i said no. who's your favorite person to interview i'd be sitting here genuinely just going who's your favorite person don't care who it is and then you'd be going well, oh dean... no he's gonna want he's probably wants me to say that it's him no 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 well dean i have thought about this you know because i've been interviewed by a few other people before and they always ask you this um and I actually figured out, because I've interviewed a lot of people, I don't have one favorite one, but I have like a top five. Mm -hmm. And I'm not lying because you're sitting here, but you you are one of, like, one of the top five. <laughs> um, yes. Especially the first one, because I learned so much about you and how, you know, simple your life is. Well, that sounds wrong, but I mean, like when you were saying you didn't have a TV and, you know, when you go on tour, you, you know, you love ads because, you know, you don't get to watch TV otherwise and just how much, like, the little things in life you appreciate. And mm. I was like, wow, it just opened my eyes to everybody should be like that. So I'm not just saying, you know, you were my favourite interview because you're sitting right in front of me, but you Amazing. Are. Microphone high five. Yep. <laughs> Hang on. Um, and then another, my other top ones in my top five, Probably uh, Todd McKenney, mm -hmm. who's judged on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. or was since Dancing with the Stars isn't on anymore. But we've become very close family friends right now as well. Um, but the first time I interview interviewed him, it was over the phone, and he was so impressed with my questions and just how nice I was. And he's had heaps of interviews, so for him to say that I was really good, plus when he's when he was in Sydney again because he was touring at that time, he's like, when I come back home. I'm going to come in and do an interview with you in person. And to me, that meant the world. Yeah. And so now, you know, I've interviewed him three times for the show. Uh, he invited me to one of his shows, got to be there for sound check and for the show and all behind the scenes. And he is like one man that just, he's so humble. Mm. And he his talent is incredible. Like for the sound check, it's a show before the show with him. Like he totally puts it on. And plus, he knows how to capture an audience and keep yeah. their attention. And he just, I swear, he can do everything, that man. And when, uh, you know, I really found that 
during the sound check and everything and knowing him personally and even after I first interviewed him knowing him personally I could not believe how many people really um, judge him and think he's so mean because he's like that on a, on um, Dancing with the Stars. I but just find not. him straight up, to be honest. He hey, like, is. I just said to him, isn't mm. that what they're on the show for? They need to be judged. Yeah. So he's just being straight up and honest. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked that in the interview I could straighten that fact for all the listeners yeah. that, you know, he's actually such a nice guy. Um, Cosentino was another really good one because mm-hmm. I've been a fan of his since Australia's Got Talent. And... You know, they always say that don't get your hopes up when you interview someone or meet someone that you uh, really admire or look up to because you could be disappointed. Mm-hmm. He was one exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Um, I interviewed him when he, um, to talk about his book that just came out. He wrote a biography about his life. And I read it before the interview. And I've never read a book so fast. I'm a very slow <laughs> reader. <laughs> and the book was like like that thick. And I mm. made like notes. I put tabs in it and everything. And he was very impressed. He's like, wow, you've done your research. But also when I was reading it, I already knew that he went through a lot of struggles to get to where he is now and be the success he is now. But I did not know how much. And it really resonated with me because of all the um, hardships I've had to go through to get to where I am. And that's something we really related to. We've started from the bottom and now we're here, not to sound like a Drake song, but... um, he was one that just blew me away <laughs> and was still really humble. Drake Did you just song. get my, my joke just then? <laughs> From oh, the bottom, man. now we're here. It takes me um, yeah, it takes me a little while to compute sometimes. Okay, he got it now. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all up on that. Um, my last two, RJ Mitty from Breaking Bad. I don't know if mm-hmm. you watch Breaking Bad. He's the, the guy that plays the son with the crutches yep. with cerebral palsy. And I've interviewed him twice now. And one on the phone and one in person. And the one in person was probably my favourite um, we're exactly the same age, you know, we already had that connection. He remembered who I was. That was very exciting. But also when I was interviewing him, he was here to do a talk because he actually has cerebral palsy. Right. And I really focused that interview on how it is to be in the industry with a disability and, you know, to actually play a character that has cerebral palsy. He doesn't have, have it as major as... Um, his character, Walt, mm-hmm. uh, Walter White Jr. in Breaking Bad. Um, but he still has it and something he has to live with every day and still yeah. proving to everyone in the industry that he's worth good roles and everything. So that was a eye opener and he is so lovely as well. And I think my fifth one, m- most people haven't heard of him, even though he's a Hollywood actor, it blows my mind. I don't know if you've heard of the TV show I Zombie. No. No? It's on... Um, Actually, show. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but it's it's on the internet. <laughs> um, it's called Eye Zombie and a guy named Robert Buckley. I interviewed him because um, I was watching Eye Zombie and I uh, ended up approaching a few people from the show, but he was the only one that got back to me. Anyway, <laughs> but I uh, ended up interviewing him and he was a, another eye-opener as well because sometimes people... I always ask the question to people, you know, was this always what you wanted to do with your life? And most of the time it's not. They always say that they want to do other things or they have a bachelor degree in something else yeah. or whatever. And he was one that did, like, architecture and didn't think of acting as something. He did it, like, for fun and thought, like, when he was younger, getting teased with that sort of thing. But uh, he's never looked back. He, he loves doing it. And uh, he was... For having an international call, uh, it was lovely. Like, I really hope I get to meet him in the future. Mm. Um, and whenever I watch Eye Zombie now, I have even more respect for him because uh, yeah. he's an incredible actor. But really, that's not what he was trained to do in the yeah. first place. <laughs> he just kind of lucked out and he's in there. Yeah, exactly. It's like Johnny Depp moved to L.A. to be a rock star and then he was doing some uh, acting jobs on the side and ended up being a movie star and now he just jams out. <laughs> yeah, every, fantastic. Every, everybody has their I little side things. I love how life things. can just take you on a different yeah, It has its own path. plan. It really yeah. does, yeah. Um, have you ever farted during an interview without <laughs> the subject knowing? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a very interesting question. It's Look, it, I, it happens. It can happen. I feel and, I have um, to be honest. I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is a natural yes! human thing. I think that deserves a yeah, <laughs> high, high five. <laughs> Oh, I'm so I'm glad sure I wrote that down. I'm sure you have to. Oh, constantly. Exactly. If you say you haven't, that's a lie. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, everyone's real 
And everyone and, um, farts in front of other people without them knowing. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, especially... It's um, got to come out somewhere, you right? You know, when you first start dating someone... And you're trying to... Yep. Yep. First six months, man. It's all about the I'm phantom. like pasty. You were my boyfriend and I still do that. Like... <laughs> I can... I do six He does months, not man. need to know that, but... <laughs> He does now. We're sorry. Sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm melting over here, by the way. Christmas panda is not loving life. I told you to be hot. Yeah, I'm really hot. I just hope the HD cameras don't pick up the sweat running down my back. <laughs> 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 Hasn't come down your face yet, thankfully. Yeah, I'm, not I'm yet. stopping it. I'm avoiding that. Um, yeah, so that's good to know. Um, good I've often, to know. <laughs> I was, I was uh, not sure whether to ask such a question, you know, because no, I, you are quite a... I like I see you as funny. quite an innocent and respectful woman, and I was like, oh, but sure, oh, come on, surely she farts in interviews, right? Yeah, so, that would yeah. be lying if I didn't. <laughs> now, and, I swear in our next interview, he'll be just like, have you farted yet? And I didn't know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I did it five seconds ago. no windows in here. <laughs> All right. A busy woman like yourself must be eating healthy. What does your daily intake look like? Oh, um... It kind of always varies. Um, in the morning, I I truly believe breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Um, and I don't like to always have the exact same thing because you do get sick of it after a while. Like mm -hmm. I used to have, not that I'm sick of it, but I used to have peanut butter and toast every single morning. But um, now that my lifestyle's changed, uh, acai bowls in the morning, either an acai bowl or like a berry smoothie, which is really nice. And my mum's usually a sweetheart in the morning, especially lately with summer. She'll cut me up a mango in the morning, which is a nice little surprise because I love mangoes. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it in a glass of water. Yeah, in the morning. Smack it down. Lunch and dinner definitely varies, definitely varies. Um, my mum's an amazing cook, so if I'm working at home, um, you know, she'll make me a nice little salad or a salad sandwich or something. Um, I love chicken, so if she can put chicken in anything, oh, love it. I'm a big fan of chicken too. Yeah, chicken's yeah. good. I think maybe your mum should move in here for a while. She can cook for you guys. That would be great. Jonathan and I would love that. I'm, I'm sure you would. I'm a good cook too if you if you want some recipes. I'm a pretty good cook, but I'm just get sick of doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody does. <laughs> now, um, you have a strong connection with your father. Yes. Um, what's the first and thing? And my mother, but... <laughs> what's the first thing? Well, I met your father the other day. Yes, I, he did. He's adorable, people. Loved him. <laughs> I really like him. He's going to love this part of the interview. Oh, <laughs> uh, loved him. Hell of a must. They're my biggest fans. They really are. They listen to every single interview. Well, what's what's the first thing? We'll do, we'll go your father first, and then and okay. then your mother. What's the first thing you can remember of your dad? Oh, first memory you have. Um, that's really <laughs> deep, deep. I'm gonna have a sip of water. I'll be over here if anyone wow. needs while you're thinking. That's right thinking back. like thinking back to like birth, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, right back then. Wow. Um, Hang on, I just need to hold this right, you know, because you can never have... It's all the branding. <laughs> I'm a shocker. I just, I grab a glass. I don't think about the branding. Five vocal tea. Um, yeah, it is very, it's like a 35 degree day today. It's a bit hot for tea. So there's just water in it today. But five it's vocal water. tea, go check them out. They're amazing. Um, oh, and I'm guessing you're going to ask the exact same thing to, about my mom. <laughs> May as well start thinking about both. <laughs> wow. Okay, right. out of your parents. No, because don't, that... don't you dare ask who I like better. That's no, 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 no okay, I would never. No, there's no such thing as favoritism. Um, what is your first memory then? What is your earliest memory of anything? Hmm. Can we come back to that? That's going to take a while. Okay. What happened yesterday? What happened Let's yesterday? Work our what way did back. happen yesterday? Yesterday was Tuesday, so I had the radio show, and. Pretty much I'm home all day just editing the interview I'm about to air and Tuesdays are pretty boring during the day. I'm just working. Fantastic. All right, now, so now backtrack Till Monday. to your first <laughs> or second year of life. Um, my dad used to pretty much carry me around everywhere. It was kind of like a free ride, which is awesome. Um, the funny that, like, memories come back as soon as I see family photos. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if that's a thing or it's just me. Um, no, I'm pretty sure that's a that's a universal human thing. Yeah. I love when I watch family videos. I think my favourite family video, uh, there you go, I can give you the answer to this one, is I uh, went up to pretty much all my mum's side of the family lives up in Mackay in Queensland and we used to do um, Christmas is up there quite regularly or we do like you know um, one year up there one year down here and there was one year up there and I have 
um, two cousins on that side of the family and we're all quite close to age. <laughs> Um, they have acreage up there so at that time they had a few horses and I remember my I was kind of terrified of horses because they're too big Um, but I had my auntie put me on there and she was um, you know right next to me in case I uh, you know fell off but my uh, cousin who's six months younger than me she was so comfortable around horses she was like pulling the uh, the rein and just kept pulling the horse like she just was like a little confident little one um, and then in the exact same day, we had a, a totem pole. Remember the totem poles and you hit the, the ball back and forth. Oh my God. I was, I think I was probably two, two yeah. or three. And I'm trying to do it because I saw my grandparents do it and it was so good. And I was like, oh, I, I got this. <laughs> and I got the, I got the little uh, racket and I'm, I'm trying to um, hold the ball and hit it. And it was just failing miserably. I'm going to have to put the little home video over this video if you have a look at. But there was one time I hit it and I have no idea where the ball went. I was just like, what the hell? And I, I turned around and the ball had hit me in the butt. <laughs> so I turned around and um, it kind of moved as I turned around because I hit it a little bit. And then I dropped the racket. So I went to go pick it up and then the ball came back at me in the head. <laughs> Is that on camera? <laughs> yes, it is. Beautiful. It's so funny. We're going to play that I... in three, two, one. Every single time I watch it as well, I laugh my head off. It's that, fantastic. It's, it's so hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> what an idiot. And that was me. <laughs> So that was a very fun memory. Not that I remember doing that, but I, I, I like watching the video. <laughs> That's um, great. Yeah. I all these memories though. Oh my gosh. Um, my favorite memories of the family has got to be um, like we did a big 2004 and 2005 each year. Uh, we'd go away Christmas holidays. I think past New Year's as well because we had New Year's over there as well. Um, we do big America, uh, America trips, so we kind of yes. go all around America. Um, we haven't gone up to like New York that side yet, but we have done um, all of Florida and Miami. We did a cruise down there, then LA and Las Vegas, and I, I'd love to go back to Las Vegas now that I'm older. It was incredible. Um, and Atlanta, Pensacola, Memphis. So we got to mm. see Elvis's house. I still remember that clearly. Yeah, uh, it was incredible. Plus, there was. Um, Little squirrels, they're so cute. Aren't they adorable? Oh my gosh, they're they my favorite so cute. animals. Other than Jeffreth here, um, the little reindeer are, with broken antlers. Yeah, it's, it's the op shop boy. <laughs> but we great. we must look like such tourists there because we all got like our cameras out and they're like, "What the hell are you doing?" It's like to them, it's nothing. They see it all the time. It's like, "Oh my god, we didn't have these in Australia." It's like taking a picture of a rat. Really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Um, but that was really fun and I am um, incredible trip. Uh, I even came back because those sort of years of your life are definitely the, um, especially for kids, they pick up everything. And I came back with an American accent. It was yeah. so funny. And just sometimes you'll still hear me roll my R's and I don't even realise it. It's, it's very funny. But that was a really good trip. That's definitely a favourite memory with my parents. Fantastic. Because as an only child, I'm very close to my parents. We call each other the three musketeers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. I know. I like that. Yeah. Now, serious question now. Channing Tatum, Brad Pitt, Harry Styles, kiss one, marry one, kill one, go. Oh! By the way, just saying, I will never kill anybody. That's right. But this is just a game. Killing is bad. <laughs> this is hard. It's pretty hard. I'm I sorry picked, if anybody. I strategically anybody's... picked yeah. <laughs> three hot guys. Three guys that I think are hot. <laughs> Which is and That's saying something, yes. Mate, um, good looking guys. And I'm sorry them. to the people that are fans of these people. I'm not... I don't think Brad Pitt's that hot. I think he used to be back when he did, like, Ocean's Eleven. I think he was really hot back I then. I think he hit his peak in Troy. Yeah. In Troy, the movie with his, with Eric Banner. Oh, yeah. Both those guys were I haven't in watched their, it, but I've seen the photos. They were in their peak yeah. in that movie. So I think I'd... And by the way, sorry if my boyfriend James is watching. I do not mean this. Um, I'd probably kiss Harry Styles. Me too. Marry Channing Tatum. <laughs> oh, Really? And kill Brad Pitt. No! After I kiss him? Does that, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's so using. You can't do that to poor Bradley. Well, then it will be it will be a nicer death because he won't see it coming. That's right. It'll be kind of like, oh, I'm getting oh, a yeah. kiss. Oh, she shivved me in the kidneys. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good question, by the way, Dean. <laughs> Gonna have to put that in my interviews now. Now, this this is actually on a serious <laughs> note. Um, bullying at school, whether it's physical or psychological, is a pretty big issue um, around Huge. the world, especially yeah. here as we know it. Um, were you bullied at school? And and uh, if you were, like, what what could you say to someone who is struggling with this? I know I did as a child. I imagine you did as well. Yep. Um, we all do. The majority of us do. So, like, um, it's just the degree of how far it goes, yeah. really. Um, this is something really close to my heart as well. I love to bring it up in interviews, just like you did, because as you said, everyone goes through it. We all go through the ups and downs as well, whether you actually suffer from something as bad as depression or you just feel, you know, you have your down days. Um, to answer your question, though, I was bullied at school. Mm -hmm. um, and just like every school, there's cliques and, you know, the popular group and non-popular group. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say like I was in the loser group or the nerd group, but I was kind of just one or two up from that. Um, <laughs> and especially around the time, su surprisingly, um, especially around 15, 16, that was a really difficult couple of years because that is when I, you know, met Justin Bieber. Everyone at school knew I had a fan side. I don't know if I actually told them or just the word Got spread. Around, yeah. yeah. But around that time, people either hated, or exactly like now, either people hate or they love Justin Bieber. Yeah. So all the people that liked him was like, oh, cool, good on you. Not many of them. But uh, everyone else was like, oh, well, like, what a loser. And especially to have a fan site, it's like, that. that's not just a fan. That's a serious fan. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, yeah, around the time when... Um, Rave It Up was born as well, all around the same time, 15, 16, 17. And when I finally figured out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it hurt because it's like, this is what I want to do. And this is my passion and my love. Why are you dissing me for it? You know? Yeah. And it was really hard. Um, luckily, I had some really good friends around me. Um, so my advice to the people that are getting bullied whatever degree it is, because I know there's some real major ones, um, is as, as easy as it's, like this is so much harder to do, but ignore it. Um, I know I did that and there was some days that it was really difficult um, where you'd kind of just want to go in the bathroom and cry, you know, mm. um, but ignore it and just remember who you are and that you, people do love you and if you have a dream like I did don't let anyone tell you different I've had hit even to this day I still have people going oh yeah that's not gonna grow, grow or go anywhere or you know are you nuts um the downers yeah the downers yeah. the haters they're Ugh. everywhere but yeah ignoring it and just yeah staying true to yourself and you know, even listen to some of my interviews with other people I've talked to about this because yeah. everyone has very similar advice and everyone has haters, whether they're a celebrity or not. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I could The just... more successful you become, the more haters you oh, will yeah. acquire. And it's, um, yeah, I, I, even recently, like coming back into the spotlight recently, re re releasing a new album, I've had people calling me fat because I'm not anorexic. I, 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 when oh, I was on, that's horrible. Like, in the spotlight a few years ago, I was underweight. I was 64 kilos and six foot two, extremely underweight. I was unhealthy and fainting all the time. So now they think you're fat. And now that I'm a healthy weight and I'm carrying weight, you know, and I'm, I'm good. I'm quite healthy now. Um, I get people who are overweight calling me fat, and that's what bullying like that's what brought it back to my attention and reminded me mm. of schooling i was like there are kids out there now that are still going through this you know that are dealing with it every day with people that are having their own insecurities and dishing mm. them out on other people when they see someone with something that they're insecure about within themselves that's when they're lashing out yeah so um you know sit back watch the simpsons and forget about it all. Yeah, I'm really glad we bring it up because even um, I was talking to Troy Kemp and Drew McAllister about this. They're country mm -hmm. music singers, and they re when they had their band McAllister Kemp together, they released a song called "Fight Me." And if no one has listened to that, you have to because that's all about. Uh, it's an anti-bullying song, mm -hmm. and it gives me goosebumps every single time I listen to it. Especially if you watch the video clip, Whew, goosebumps. Um, but just remember, everyone's going through it. And if you see it, like, stop it or report it. You know, if you are getting bullied to a 
well, to any degree, you should be telling someone. Um, because people are saying they're taking it more seriously, especially in schools, but I don't think they are. Um, which annoys me. So Kids are the worst, though. Like, oh. I found bullying dropped off big time after I left school. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, workplace bullying is a lot better than schoolyard bullying. Schoolyard bullying... Like, kids are ruthlessly... Like they're brutal. They're either brutally honest or just brutal in general. When they yeah. <laughs> when it comes to bullying, they're they they've got time. They've they're not you know they're not busy with work, so they've got time to put into this stuff to make your life miserable. And it's just I don't think it will ever end, but I I think there's ways that people can uh, manage it better, like dealing with it themselves. You yeah. Know? It's the only way with things like that. It's not going to stop until there's a massive nuclear war and we're all dead. Yeah. Bullying's going to always affect be you, there. It's all but good. But yeah, I think ways of uh, moving on yourself and not yeah. not letting it affect you as much. Jeez. If you are struggling and you're watching yeah. this and you're having a situation, uh, go to Headspace and yeah. talk to them. Um, they're really open to helping with things like that. And, and I know it can you. get really bad in your mind, yeah. mental health. So Lifeline's also another good one. It you right up. Mm. Properly crowd. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, if you had to lose one of the five senses. Oh. This is a tricky one. Now, I, I, I try and wake up each day with a, a gratitude for being Me alive too. and whatnot. You know, like uh, simply just walking out onto the lawn, being able to feel it on my feet, being able to walk See, this is what there. I loved about our first um, interview. You can smell, you can taste, you can see, I can hear and I can walk. I have all my limbs. Um, even if it's a bad day and I've lost a lot of money the day before on a show or I've lost it some, you know, and I'm not feeling overly well. The five senses, if you've got those and you've got a functioning body, you're doing really, really well. Mm. So, but if you had to choose one. At least you're giving me the five senses. Sometimes I go, would I rather lose my sight or my hearing and to me those two huge things mm. because sight i wouldn't be able to like you know i love editing videos uh, i wouldn't be able to do that anymore or if i did it'd be very very interesting and especially hearing i would never be able to listen to music ever again and to me that's huge and i'm sure it is for you too so rule those out yeah rule those out i'm not, not giving those up <laughs> so you get smell taste what's the other one i know there's five right and touch yes it's interesting when you think about getting rid of your um, smell. You technically can't taste anyway. That's right. Because when you you know you block your nose, you can't taste. So that's pretty much getting rid of two senses, isn't it? Yeah, mm. that's true. But actually, yeah. So there really is only four senses. Four senses. Because just to why get really scientists technical. Scientists work this out. I yet? know, very technical. Like, seriously, like, Christmas pandas on it. And 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 Lauren. Yeah, but you're I'm, not dressed up like a panda. I know. I you know. I'm more of the wintry Christmas today. The blue and the little snowflakes. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice the you snowflakes. Didn't. I noticed the snowshoes. Oh, the sparkly not. snowshoe <laughs> style of thing. <laughs> um, going half summer, half winter. Uh, then I know this is probably cheating now that I've just said it, but probably get rid of taste because then I can at least smell. Okay. Get taste. Fair enough. I'd probably go. Then you could go really well. healthy, and then you wouldn't even know it. All the all the healthy stuff that doesn't taste good, you wouldn't even know. Well, I'd probably go. I'd probably go nose, to be honest. No. Then I can't taste. So you're getting rid of two. Tricky cents. question. Yeah, I know. Is, don't ever ask me this question. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna chuck it back at him now. Never do that. Cat or dog person? Definitely a dog person. Oh, good girl. I, I love, love dogs. dogs. I used to have one. She passed away a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, loved her dearly. I'd love another one, but I think it would just be too much effort for me now. <laughs> you now got if to... you were to own a dog, right? Um, We'd go halvesies. Oh, when I, I, do that. No, but when like, I don't have time to look after him anymore. <laughs> if you had a dog and it passes away, how long should you wait before getting another dog? Because I've heard stories about people who have had a Labrador who's died and they got a puppy Labrador the next week. Oh, like, oh, I, could, I couldn't do that. Yeah. It's been Probably a too soon. Too soon? Yeah, too soon. I think it's been, uh, yeah, over two years since mine's passed away. And I think I'm only getting, like, used to the idea of getting another one now. Try a um, guinea pig first, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of vibe. <laughs> well, actually, I wanted a pet. And for my birthday, I, uh, I, I bought a fish. So Fantastic. I've got a little Siamese fighting fish now called Buddy. They're he is great. so cute. Low maintenance if you they want are. a fish that's low maintenance. Oh my god, they're so fish. all you gotta do is feed them once a day. Don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. I do go up and say hi and chat to him, but um They don't talk back though. 
And not, you just have to clean the, t or, you know, do a water change once a week. They're so... For someone that's so busy, like me, <laughs> so easy. Never put another fish in the tank with it, P.S. No, no. no Unless it's a girl, the Siamese, um, they're okay to be in the tank together. But girl, no offense to the girl, Siamese fighting fish, they look so boring. Like the guys, the, the males are so pretty. They've got the long fins. They're colourful. The girls are not colourful and they've got really small fins. Like Find that not a bit pretty in, at all. In, in the animal kingdom. It's always the male it's, that it's looks pretty. It's males that are all... Which is not the case with uh, humans, humans at all. The men of the plane look in wines and the girls have got, you know, all the flair. All the flair, all yeah. All the flair. <laughs> so Bits we are not the pops, animal kingdom. You know? But yeah, I'd probably... It depends how attached you are to your dog. Like a year... I guess about a year, a year or yeah. two, like just depends. Um, because pretty much all my life I hated cats. Um, till I started dating my boyfriend because he's got a cat and their cat Lily. Oh my god, so cute! As long as the cat behaves like a dog, right? Lily doesn't really act <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> oh, she, she's a spoiled little one. Um, but no, she's adorable. Like, don't. I don't mind her as a cat, and now I'm starting to get used to the idea of, you know, liking cats, but do dog person through and through, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you play music, or do you draw? Do you have any other secret little hidden talents and hobbies? Because you are, like, my favourite journo interviewer. Aww. Always gets the best questions. Tell me about like, it again. That was so nice. Okay. <laughs> You're my favourite interviewer journo. I was joking, you didn't have to say it again, but thank you. I dropped you. it again. Look, I thought she was being serious. Um, so, that's good. Hopefully, it, ho your heart should always be warm. If it's not, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there, do you have hobbies? Do you have anything else that you do other than this? You'll be surprised to hear I've got several diff little talents nobody knows about, unless you're a really close friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, or family. Actually, some I don't think some family even know this. I, I don't play any musical instruments. Um, beginning of school, like junior school, you used to always have to play Recorder one. Recorder and all that um, stuff. Yeah, my mum used to say I was like really good at um, flute, which I didn't mind. Um, I did start learning the guitar a couple of years ago, but I didn't think I was very good at that either. But so I've kind of, unless you want to teach me, make it a bit more fun than I made it. Um, other than Probably that, not. I, it's a really, <laughs> it's a really hard thing to teach probably, people. Probably yes. Um, I love dancing. Yeah. Do it like for exercise all the time. So Ooh. like actual routine dancing, or just going to the RSL and getting off. Okay, not the RSL, but I have like <laughs> our lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> our lounge room, I've danced since I was a, uh, a little kid, and our lounge room only has a couple of couches in it for that very reason because I, that's my dancing room. I okay. like to have all that room. So It's been like that for, for your whole life, time. right? Yes, yeah. since we moved there, which only was child. when I was five. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, and my mum has always called me like a female Michael Jackson. He's one of my inspirations when it comes to music. Yes. And Tell us more about that. So I'm, I'm like a female Michael Jackson and because I feel the music. So yeah. I, I usually never make a routine. I used to do dance classes when I was um, around junior school, but I just I couldn't. There was no love in it because I wasn't, you know, feeling the music and doing the moves I wanted to do. Yeah. So that's what I do now. Uh, I do that for exercise every now and then. As well as my aerial silks. Um, aerial silks. Aerial silks. Oh my gosh. Which is very cool. Yes, I love doing it. Um, and so that's one hidden talent. I love to sing. I never yeah. saw you as a dancer or an aerial silk kind of gal, to be honest. There you go. You're learning a lot about me. I was thinking... I'm sure I didn't really know. No, you didn't really that's think about it. That's why the question's there. <laughs> but I did like... That's just not what would come to mind. I'm trying to think now. What would I think... I would have thought, for some reason, I thought that you might dabble on a piano. I'm really bad at the piano. But instead, I... she does aerial silks, like pink. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, and it was something on my bucket list for so long, so I wanted to try it. Uh, love to sing. I'm pretty pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. um, and my mum's an incredible singer, too. So for so long. And I still think it's a hidden love, a hidden goal of ours, is we'd love to make a band together because we sing, like, uh, we harmonise so well. Yeah. We haven't done it for a while, but we do. I'm sure it's still there. Um, but I still love to sing. Mum hears me all the time. And um, and I, I've just, over the past like year or so, I've gotten back into drawing. And I love doing yeah. that as a, a thing to just make your mind escape. And, you know, as well as meditation. But, yeah, that just a nice creative 
to relax. How important do you think it is to meditate once to twice a day? I think it's hugely important. It's Microphone so high important. five. Yeah. You do it too? Yep. Oh my God, didn't know that. An hour a day, two hours a day. Wow, um, okay, I don't do it that long, hour. but that's impressive. Yeah. Um, I think everyone's different, everyone meditates differently. Um, ever since I've uh, implemented it into my life, it is incredible. Yeah. Like how much I did not know that, like, I went to the Mind Body Spirit Festival this year, and that was definitely a big realization for me because I got my um, an aura check. Yeah. Have you ever done one of those? They're mm -hmm. amazing. And I found out um, two of my chakras were a little bit large, like they actually give you the printout and everything. Two of my chakras are a bit larger than all the others. And one of them was my third eye and one was like groin because your third eye is um, is because I overthink too much. Mm -hmm. And the groin is like where you're really creative. Um, surprisingly, who wouldn't think that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's... Um, both of those were a bit larger than everything else because I overthink everything and I stress way too much. Yeah. Once I uh, added meditation to my life properly um, and knowing how to do it properly, um, I'm I feel so I feel so stress free. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's an incredible thing. I think they should teach is. meditation in school. Plus, I'm looking at the world so differently now. Yeah. Like if I see someone angry instead of like, or if someone's angry at me instead of like feeling angry yourself i instead just go i feel sorry for that person yeah like i'm so sorry that you're so angry yeah um and i'm just seeing so much more good in the world so yeah. meditation well, most it's people phenomenal. think it's you know silly but well, people i mean implement it into your life and you'll see the changes yeah it's something that's um you know the hippies back in the day the hippies tried to spread the word of meditation because they were also into a lot of hallucinogen drugs and things like that the society and governments sort of, you know, sh shine a bad light on hippies. Mm. You know, so people are like, oh, you're a hippie. And if you meditate, people are like, oh, you're a dirty hippie. And it's like, no, 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 no. No, no. We actually Everyone care about Everyone should life. meditate. <laughs> I think hippies uh, had a lot right. You know, mm. so much of what they did was right. Yeah. You know, um, Meditation, I think, is key. It is. I'm so stoked that you do that. And especially it connects back to what we're talking about with, like, bullying and stuff, how it really can um, affect your mental state. With meditation, yeah. it gets rid of all that. Mm. And you're back to your true self, who you were supposed to be, and just, you know, loving life again. Fantastic. And, like, there's no worries in the world. You yeah. Know? If there is, you just... You know how to confront them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, um... I just learned something new about you, too. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I... I meditate all the time. I think it's a it's a fantastic tool. Yeah, it you is. Know? And I'd be a lot like Jeffeth here if I didn't meditate. I'd be broken antler. I'd have a broken antler. And I'd be sad. Um, now, okay. for the final question of this interview, I want to thank you for uh, joining you us for here and letting me, me uh, interview here on my show, Rave It Up. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's taking so, over now, guys. That was the big surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the board. Now, um, you can be if you want. That's a good idea. Actually, that'd be great. We'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk about there. this further. Yep. <laughs> um, so, Dean Ray has released a new record lately. Oh, now, it's has just been he? Recently, what? <gasps> not long ago, a couple months ago. Uh, it's called The Messenger. Um, what would be your favourite track off that album and why? <laughs> if we, if anybody watched the last interview, I think you know what my favourite song of that album is. <laughs> Even when I, went, when I saw you live, I just got so excited when you stopped performing. I was like, oh my god! Ah, uh, Six Feet Under, definitely. Really? Yes. The murder song. The murder song. Is your favourite, favourite song, song is the murder song. Fantastic. <laughs> it's so catchy. It's either that or the winnings. That's really catchy as well. If go check it out, people. The messenger. The murder song. I'm, I'm shocked and horrified. You already knew that. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. And, Merry um, Christmas and a happy new year. <laughs> thank you, Lauren, You're for welcome. sharing some of you with some of us. Oh, that was a very nice way of saying and that. I had, to take, I had to say a little bit camp there because it was very sensitive. It was. I think uh, he, he might have to be a co-host now on Rave It Up. I don't know. It would be pretty damn cool. As long as it's not early mornings, we can some work that out. Some of them are. Might not be a good idea then. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Here on Rave It Up. And um, enjoy your glass of tea. Cup thank of you. tea, water tea. Thank you. And for everyone watching, as we said, make sure to check out Dean's album, The Messenger. Christmas so Panda. Good. I don't. Uh, I don't suggest ever wearing a panda suit 
in the summer months. No, don't do it. I even okay. told him it was a bad idea. You're going to start listening idea. to me now? Yes. <laughs> I'm actually going to go for a swim. Okay, bye. And, of course, go to raveituptv.com for all the other interviews I've done and, you know, see the ones I was actually talking about as well. Yeah. yeah. Go and see the first one. Yeah. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.